everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a little bit of a different style of video compared to what I normally do. We're having more of a chatty, calm video. <laughs> it's very unlike me. Um, there is a lot of nostalgia right now for me wearing this uniform. Um, we're going to be talking about what it was like for me to own one of the biggest, at the time, UK clubs, still dancers. Um, I owned them for about two or three years. Um, and I'm just going to be talking about what it was like and any tips and tricks that I learned in my two to three years of owning one of the biggest UK clubs of all time. And I would proudly take that title because we were one of the biggest and one of the longest running. <laughs> anyway, let's just get into it. So... I'm just gonna have a little introduction. I'm sure most of you already know who I am and what club I owned, but in case you don't, um, I owned the club Still Dancers um, between the years around 2019, very early 2019, and then I stopped owning the club in about 20 late 2021 slash 2022. Um, we were easily one of the biggest clubs in our prime, um, easily. There was some months during that time where we had um 50 members and the waiting list was about 50 members and we'd have i think the most active we ever got at one point was i'll obviously being certain pictures was about i want to say about this is crazy but um probably about 48 members online at once we had and obviously that event we didn't really do much we just sort of stood around taking pictures but anyway so i started my owning my club in 2019 like i said in april um did i have the intention of owning a, a massive club y yes somewhat i wanted to own a big club did i know that it was going to reach the level it did and give me all the opportunities i had which obviously i will be talking about no i didn't know um i had no idea um and it was crazy um I had been in a few clubs myself previously. I'd only been in about two or three though, both, one of which I'd owned. So my first ever club was called Blue Enigmas Division and it was a much smaller club. It was never very big and it only lasted for a couple of months. Um, and then I joined a friends club and then I made still dancers. Um, I get asked a lot, was it inspired off of any club? Somewhat, it was inspired off of I'd say probably Iron Hoops was the biggest inspiration at the time. Like a big dressage club was exactly what I wanted. I really enjoyed doing dressage and I knew that I wanted a dressage club and I wanted it to be very active and very big. Um, but like I said, I had no idea it was going to reach the potential it did. Um, I'd, I'd say as a trick, I'd say a big tip I learned was persevering because with clubs, they're very unlikely to be huge in the first couple of months. It's going to take time. It's going to take for people to see your club and realise and be like, oh, hey, isn't that that club? Like, you know, it, it takes time is what I'm trying to say. And and good things come to those who wait is something which I've learned in life. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is what it was like is how I managed to get my club more fame so i didn't really use social medias that much with my club unfortunately when i started my club i didn't make an instagram for it i didn't do anything like that because i wasn't aware it was going to reach the level it did and then one of my members made an instagram for it and unfortunately just the the nature of habit is that the instagram got passed around a lot and it ended up being that we never really had a sustainable Instagram account. We had multiple, which obviously meant that the fame never really grew through Instagram or social media. Um, I found that the biggest thing which helped me at the time was having a big club, having a lot of members which are extremely active. I was a massive enforcement of activeness. I made sure that everyone was as active as physically possible. And if they weren't active, I removed them. I was very strict about it. Um, and also, we did a lot of advertisement on Global Chat, which I also found really helped because it meant that people who were in that server were aware that we were a club. Um, 
So if you're not looking to go down the 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 social media route, which I didn't really at first, then I'd recommend that. Another thing which I found helped was my YouTube channel, which obviously not everyone would be available to do, but I did find that making videos about still dancers massively helped boost my club. Um, we also got noticed and recognised by other YouTubers at the time, which also helped to boost, I'm going to be honest, which also helped to boost my club. Another trick, another tip I'm going to say is that it helps to not accept members just for the sake of it. Don't be so desperate that you'll accept anyone. Um, I found that if I did that, I would get people who would join and then just wouldn't be active. You have to look for the right member for your club and not accept anyone just for the sake of it. Um, the thing which I struggled with with owning still dancers was that we had events basically every day and whilst I owned still dancers, luckily, well, uh, luck, unluckily, it was during COVID and it meant that I had a lot of free time. So I had the time to invest into the club. However, now I would absolutely not have the time to invest into the club. And I found it a challenge to log on every day um, into the later years of owning the club. I found it easier, obviously, during the first couple of years, but I found it a lot more difficult during the later years and which ultimately made me have to give up still dancers was that I just quite simply did not have the time to own a club. It is a huge time investment and if you're not willing to put in the time into owning one, it often doesn't work out, unfortunately. I also found that with owning my club that clubs, owning a club isn't for everyone. Um, it is a lot of pressure. You do get faced with a lot of backlash, especially when you're a big club. I got a lot of backlash and I often found that people were... I don't want to. I don't want to be rude, but I think some people can often get quite jealous of the fact that your club is successful. But I think people forget that it took a lot of months and it took a lot of time to build up to that level of success. It wasn't a straight off the bat instant success. I didn't have a big YouTube channel before I started a club, so it wasn't that I had a big YouTube channel and then made a club and then got members through my YouTube channel. It was I gained those members through hard work and time. Um, and I think people don't see that side of it. They just see they've got a big club, they're successful. That's not fair. Um, and it takes time and it's not for everyone and it is a big dedication. But if you're willing to put in the time and effort, it is 100% worth it. And I honestly, some of my best memories and some of my best times from this game are from owning Steel Dancers. I, I love that club so much, um, especially during the COVID period when life shut down a little bit for everyone and i had a lot of time free time i found it great owning a club because i had a big group of online friends um a few little top tips i would recommend would be make sure that you are very clear with what you expect from your club when you make it if you're wanting to be successful what kind of club you are you have to have a very clear structure to, to be able to to be able to sell your club people need to see that it's well put together and well thought out so ours was very clearly a dressage club if you're wanting to be a role play club it has to be very clear that it's a very well structured and thought out club otherwise people aren't going to be interested in joining i'd also recommend putting the time and effort into looking into a cheap and affordable uniform <laughs> i can't stress this enough with when you're starting out a club especially if it's a new club make your uniform cheap it makes and something which a lot of people own so this was our uniform for the vast majority of my time owning the club this hoodie is 30 star coins this saddle pad is 30 star coins the rest of the items in this piece most people already owned so it made the uniform so accessible to most players, which is a big selling point of a club because it means that people don't have to spend ages getting the uniform and it means that everyone can have the uniform all at once, which I found was a big help with advertising is that people will ride by, see everyone in your club wearing the same uniform and think, oh, they look cool. I want to join that club. Um, so I can't stress enough to make it cheap and affordable, as well as the horse. For a long while, our horse was the Frisians. The, the, obviously, it was the Gen 2 Frisians. Um, that was a horse which a lot of people had. 
um, especially the black one, which is the one we use, a lot of people had that horse, which meant that it was really accessible. I would 100% recommend picking a horse which is accessible um, to most players, or a horse which most players have. It just makes it a lot easier. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very soon with another video. Bye, guys. <laughs>